Hello everyone, welcome to Weaving with Diane. In this video we are going to slay the reed and thread the loom. Slaying the reed means putting the threads through the slots in the reed. To start off we have our reed actually out of the loom and in two cross holders or just supports which is just dowel on a piece of timber and we have the centre of the reed marked. Now you will see one of the benefits of splitting the warp into two. I have two warp chains attached into a cross holder here. I can leave one behind and out of the way and I can grab this one. Now I find the best way to do this is to lay it out for me because I am right handed. I have the cross on the left, I have my string cross holder sticking up so that it's an extra thing to hold the cross in position and on the right I have my choke thread. Now here is where I would often grab the top of the chain and hook it over there. That just helps stopping it from, if that falls over, it won't undo. And that can just sit there. By having two warp chains, it means I can start here and go this way. And then when I do the other one, I can start next to it and go that way. And no, I will have it evenly balanced. If I have just the one warp chain, it's not a problem, it just means I need to measure from the centre half the distance of the warp out, put my hook through and that's where I start. Okay, so this is how you go. All these threads are in line. For this particular project we know we are putting one thread in each dent. So, I'm sorry it's probably a bit hard to see in the black, but when you're looking straight down on it you can see which is the top thread. So here I, have, I've, here I am, I've picked up the top thread with my hook, put my finger under it so that then I can grab it firmly, but you must hold the tails before you pull. Hold the tails and pull that top thread out. Now, the other thing I didn't do, because it's hard to see in the black, I didn't make sure that this was untwisted. So I'm just untwisting the warp until you can see that that is coming straight out. Now I can hook it back over. This needs to be straight and not twisted, otherwise it makes life awkward. So, as we're doing two warp chains, I go to the centre, I hook it through. Then I reach under and grab the next one. It will come out on that side of the cross holder. I hold the knot again and I pull him out. See, now that's nice and straight, not a problem there. I'm going this way, so I then hook him and pull him through. Underneath, grab the thread, hold the tail, pull him out, hook through, pull him through. Hook through, pull him through. Now, when you've done a couple, now I've done four, you could do more than four, uh, but it is best once you've done a certain section, could be maybe an inch, do a slip knot just to secure the ends. The idea being that if something happens, they're not going to fall out because your cross is now being held in the reed. You can't afford to lose that. So I will now continue on threading, a, sorry, slaying the rest of the reed and then we will go to threading the loop. I've reached the end of the reed and discovered I have a little bit of a problem. I have only one dent left. I have two threads. So what I've decided to do, I've already done it here. I've put one extra thread in the previous dent and I'm going to take these two threads and put them in the last dent. This will give me a slightly firmer selvage, but that's not a bad thing. Now, the other point I wanted to make is when you get to the point of very few threads left, left in your cross, you really need to hold this firmly because if you're not careful, all your threads can pull out of the cross. In this case, we're putting two threads in the last dent so it doesn't matter, we can just pull them both out and thread them through. Next step, this can just stay there. Grab your next warp and start threading and going that way. The warp has been slayed through the reed. So as you can see, we have two warp chains hanging and on the back, everything has been tied with a slip knot for safety. So I can do that and not go, oh my goodness. We walk over to the loom. 
We have the beater, now I've raised the top of the beater here to make it easier to get in. I find if you slip the, flick it so that the slip knots are at the top, you can then put the bottom in and then pull all the slip knots over. You can't afford to have threads caught in the bottom of the beater. Right, that looks the top's clear. The other thing you want to do is line up the centre of the beater with the centre mark on the reed. Now I can push this down. Double check to make sure that centre mark is there. Tighten it up. And now these chains can just sit on the floor. And I undo the loose knot that I did around the end of the chain. If I was worried, if it was a pure white warp or something, I might get a shopping bag or something and tie it down here and have the warp sitting in the shopping bag. But with this one, it doesn't matter if it unchains and falls down. Now, this is the choke knot. That is what's tied around the warp that we did when we were creating the warp. Now we want to tie it firmly. There is the half of the, the warp. We want to tie it right in the centre. Now, if I've made a slip knot too tight, I just shift the slip, slip knot a bit further down so that I can tie it in the centre. That looks a bit better. I normally go one under, one over. And then I might do a half knot there. And then I'll reverse them. The idea is that this is securely anchored. Now I'll do my reef knot. And then you do the same for the second one. The other thing you want to have is a straight line here. We do not want it twisted. It must be straight. Both warp chains are securely knotted. Now we go to the back of the loom. We pick up our threading hook. And if you have an option for beta positions, put it in the closest one so that you can see clearly where you are. Now to make life easier, I'm going to put my stool down. Perfect. Now I am seeing the eyes of the heddles and the reed. If the reed keeps doing what you don't want it to do and like that just then it shifted, that's really not a problem as long as before I start weaving I match up those two marks, the centre of the reed and the centre of the beater. Now I we're putting one thread through on the first shaft, one thread through on the second shaft. So first we do the front, then the back, then the front, then the back. So I normally have about, in this situation, probably say about three heddles from either shaft to the front. I will grab that first bundle. Now in this case, I'm treating two as one because I didn't um, measure how long my reed was and I made the warp just that little bit too wide. I pull it through, I then go to the back. I put the hook through the eye. Now you can use your fingers to separate the next one. In this case again, it's still, it's another pair. Actually no, it's not, it's a single. Pull it through, separate the next one, hook up the next heddle, pull it through. If these shafts keep wriggling too much, you can clamp them together if necessary, as long as the heddles can move along. So we have gone front, back, front, and then we're going to back again. I have separated my thread, hook him through, shift him along, and then we're going to the front again. Hook, push, back. Now, we have done six, what we need to do now grab these tails, make sure that they are going the correct way around the heddle so that when you pull them up, you can see them nicely sitting the way they should to create the sheds we want. 
another slip knot, flick him over, grab some more, and off we go again. This is the same principle whether you're warping up plain weave or warping up a pattern. You want to have the number of heddles sitting there ready, say for your pattern repeat, and then you can tie them in bunches so that then you have a bunch of a pattern repeat that you can check. I'm now going to go across the whole warp, threading it through the heddles. We're just threading the last threads here. I've got three threads left. Two things that I have done to make life easier with the threading. I have changed hook to a much finer hook and I've used some bulldog clips to hold the top of the shafts together and then things aren't wriggling around, so it's much easier. Right. With the, the long, thin hook, you can put, the, put it through the eye of the heddle, hook on, pull through without a problem. Then through the back one, grab the next pair in this case, because I'm on the outside edge, or I doubled them up. And then the very last one, hook it through. Grab those threads together, do the slip knot, and we are all done. Now, I do need to make a very brief comment about a pair up here where when I was untying the knot the slip knot I accidentally broke a thread all I did was grab another length of thread that's why I have a long tail here another length of the warp thread and I overhand knotted together so that is a knot that will not move and will not loosen because of the position of that knot it's very unlikely it's really going to get woven so it really is not going to create a problem with anything but that's what you do if that happens and it breaks, just do an overhand knot. There we are, We're, we are all done. So, the next video will be tying it on, winding it on and tying on the other end and getting ready to weave. Thanks for your company, bye.